Hi everybody. Hello. Uh, today I'm going to go through my N NBA big board. Uh, so I've spent hours and hours and hours. I've scouted 130, oh well, 129 players. 130 players. Yeah, 129 players just from uh, watching YouTube highlights. So, you know, I'd watch maybe minimum of five minutes of play from each player and I think... I think I've done it so much now that I think I have a really good uh, idea of what how a play can fit in in the NBA. So my big board is pretty different to what I've seen other places online do it. Um, the first pick alone is a bit weird. I'll get to that. I'll just get my glasses. Man, I'm only 22 and my eyesight's... I mean, I look cooked, don't I? Look at my eyes. I'm all squinty. Looking, looking at screens too much. Uh, I'll just put this so it's less distracting. There we go. Okay. So, I think this draft, it has maybe six or seven potential all-stars, but not that much Hall of Fame talent. So... It's just interesting to think about when people say that it's a very loaded draft. I'm I'm not so sure about that. I mean, I've compared I've compared my the my prospect rankings and fit in the best prospects in with my NBA player rankings. Um uh, and my top pick is maybe the th could be like the 30th most 30th most valuable player in the NBA right now. So, you know, 30th not so good. I mean, obviously they can develop and become up there, but I'm not sure there's many MVP caliber talents uh, in this draft. But I'll start off. Um, number one is Miles Bridges out of Michigan State. Now, I've heard people say that he could go 10th or 11th in that range, but I think as a power forward prospect, he's perfect for today's NBA. He's one of the best shooters in the country. And, but he's in like Charles Barkley slash Vince Carter's body. I think he's you know, 6'7", 230, which means that he can uh, rebound well. He can defend guys out in the wing well. Um, and obviously he can space the floor. I think he can be your first option. I think he can come off screens and shoot or uh, drive by guys. His handle's not great, so that's why I don't think he's best great as a small forward. I think power forward is best where he can make the most of his quickness compared to the um, league's fours. And he can just sky up and dunk and, yeah, pretty good defensively. So, yeah, he's my number one guy. I mean, who else can go number one? I'll talk about Luka Doncic later, but I just don't think that he's athletically good enough to be even in the lottery. I've got him as 16th. But hear me out. Uh, number two is Jaron Jackson, the Michigan State teammate of Bridges. Um, you know, six eleven can defend probably three through five. Um, an okay jump shot. Um, he reminds me a little bit of Kevin Garnett, just in the body and the defensive prowess. And I think he's you know he can space the floor, so he can be effective on offense as well. So he can be an awesome role player from day one at power forward spot. Number three. No one's talking about this guy. Um, he's been tagged as a shooting guard, but I think he's such a good playmaker and dribbler and passer and great IQ that I think he can be a good point guard. Is Bruce Brown out of Miami? He's six foot five, two hundred and twenty pounds, so he can defend maybe one through four. Great wingspan as well, but his playmaking ability means that he can you know, run the point very well. I think he can be like a third option on offense. Um, you know, Marcus Smart type defender, just really physical. Number four is the center out of Arizona, DeAndre Ayton. Um, he's basically like kind of like Joel Embiid, Hakeem Olajuwon type size, um, and he's got pretty good feel for the game. I think that he doesn't do enough of the little things to be a number one pick. Like he doesn't really set screens very well. He doesn't do all the big man stuff that you really need. I'm not sure about his effort in boxing out, but he's so gifted athletically 
and fairly skilled that I think he can still be maybe a second option on offense and an absolute beast. Um, number five is Michael Porter out of Missouri. Now, people take him as a small forward, but I think he's gifted enough athletically athletically to stay in front of point guards. So I'd have him as a third option point guard in sort of like a Giannis sort of mold. You know, like 6'11", but pretty lean, but that means that he's fast enough to guard guys. I think he's got really pretty good feel for the game, good passer, so he can see over the defense to make passes. Um, his handle is okay for his size and he can shoot his, his jumping requires a lot of effort I think he has, he sort of it's an actual jump shot like he jumps up in the air and then he sort of shoots it almost on the way down so I think that might have to be uh, figured out at the next level but yeah, yeah I think he's a top 5 pick just because he's he can fly all over the floor like Giannis from the point guard spot and uh, yeah uh, number 6 is the centre out of UNLV Brandon McCoy I'd have him as a second option on offense because he's just so massive, so he can hold his hold down the paint down low, and he can finish with either hand um, fairly well. And oh, can he? Or maybe he can't. Maybe he doesn't really use his left knuckle. And he's got some touch out to maybe 15 feet on the mid range, so he can space the floor a little bit as a gigantic center. And I think he's fast enough to guard guys out in the perimeter. So I think he can average, you know, 18 and 10. In the NBA, number seven is Wendell Carter Jr. out of Duke. Uh, I think people talk about him as a center, but I'd have him as a power forward, just because he's not quite tall enough to play center. I think, but at power forward, he can overpower guys. He can shoot a little bit. He can pass a little bit. I think as a third option on offense, he'd be good. Number eight is Keita Bates Diop out of Ohio State. Now, he's only six seven, but I think he can be a stretch center. Because his wingspan must be seven foot four or something. It's like absurd when you look at it. Um, I think he can be a stretch center, maybe like a fourth or fifth option. But he does all the th- little things well. Um, yeah, uh, number nine is Mikhail Bridges out of Villanova. I think he's a power forward. I don't think he can. He has the skills to play at small forward, but a power forward, he can defend probably one through four. Uh, he's long enough to grab rebounds. He's a bit slight for a power forward, but I think he can play well there. Number 10 is Shaq Morris out of Wichita State, I believe. you got to watch the tape on this guy. He's like, he's a slightly shorter Al Jefferson in terms of his physicality and skills inside. And he can bet he can shoot threes. And he's pretty nimble. For such a massive dude, he's like 270 pounds or something. So he can hammer you inside on the, on the boards, and he can also space the floor a bit. So that's worthy of a top 10 pick, I believe. Look at his tape. Number 11 is Mo Bamba. I think he's a power forward as well. There's a lot of power, good power forwards in this, in this draft. Obviously, the value in a lot of these guys is that they can switch positionally. So Bamba could play a bit of center, but I think he'd get pushed around too much. He's not strong enough. But at power forward, I think he can get a lot of weak side blocks, like an Anthony Davis type. And I think he's got an okay jumper, so he could space the floor from the corners or something like that. Uh, Number 12 is Alizé Johnson out of Valparaiso, I think. Uh, He's also a power forward. He can basically do everything to an okay extent, which is uh, good good enough for me in the lottery. Now, number 13 is Marvin Bagley. So I haven't seen any, him slip out of the top five in any mock drafts, but for me, I don't think he's good enough in on the interior defensively. I don't think he's good enough. I don't think he. Yeah, I just not, I'm not sure he has the physicality to play inside in the NBA. I think his best position in the NBA is a shooting guard. He's quick enough to guard them. And he can overpower them offensively, like in the post or on the boards. And yeah, he's fast enough probably to guard two through through four. So, you know, he can play a bit of shoot small forward and power forward. But I think he's best as a shooting guard because he can shoot a bit. Like it's 37% from three, I believe, in college. Not great from the free throw line. So, yeah, he I think he could be used as a guy coming off screens. And then he's got the handle at 6'11 to get past guys. But I just don't think... 
he can defend inside or finish inside because he basically only uses his left hand. So, yeah. Um, I think I might... Okay, this is only going to be a lottery analysis because I feel like I'm flying through this too fast. Um, and there's a lot to go through. I'll talk about some of the guys that are outside of the lottery just, just to... Um, yeah, just to tell you why maybe I'm not including them, whereas everyone else does. Um, but number 14 is Chandler Hutchinson. He is best as a shooting guard, I think. I think he can be like a, almost like, he's like Clay Thompson size, so 6'7", so he can defend probably uh, 2 through 4. And he's got an okay shot, and I think he's got a developing sort of offensive game with some, um, maybe a little post game, a little bit of dribbling. So, yeah, I think that's a lot of value. So, yeah, so I'll just talk about some guys who I've got outside of the lottery. Uh, Luka Doncic at 16, I think he's... I think he can be very good offensively. I think... At shooting guard, I think he's his best position. I don't think he can defend point guards at all. Shooting guards, there's not a whole lot of really strong players at shooting guard in the league. I think it's one of the weaker positions. So, I think he can get by defensively at shooting guard. Uh, he's... So he can play in the in the high post or low post as a shooting guard against smaller guards. And I think you can have him coming off screens because he's a pretty good shooter. But I think you'd have to compensate defensively because he's not really on par there. And he might get... Have, he might, he'll have a lot of difficulty getting shots off inside and getting free from players offensively. So I think he's... I think drafting him first would be a huge reach. Time will tell, but I just don't see his skills translating to the NBA. Uh, another another guys that I've left out the Kevin Knox. I think is he can be like a good third option small forward, but I don't think he's consistent enough. I don't he's yeah I, I I don't know if his basketball IQ is that high, but he's you know a great athlete and he can defend out in the perimeter and a little bit inside and he can shoot a bit and he can handle a bit. But yeah, I've got him going twenty ninth. Uh, who else? Colin Sexton. He's my thirty second ranked prospect. Without a jump shot, I don't think you can make it in the league at a very high rate. Uh, I think he can be a third option point guard. And he can run the show fairly well uh, and be pretty good defensively. But on offense, you will struggle a lot if your point guard can't shoot. So, what's this? It's weird. I think I might have been leaning on that or something. It's not a hickey. All right. Uh, yeah, it's Colin Sexton. He's the 32nd ranked prospect, I believe. Trey Young. Uh, he's 37th for me. I think he's such a good shooter that he can... There's a lot of gravity, as they talk about that with Steph Curry. So if you leave him open, he'll knock it down. But I don't think he brings anything else to the table. I don't think his handles and his will be good enough to overcome his size issues. Uh, and defensively, I think he's going to get absolutely exploited. I think the difference between him and Curry is that Curry is bigger. He's stronger. Like the, Can't the dude deadlift like 400 pounds or something? He's an, un an underrated athlete, and Curry just has the yeah he's he's faster, you know, probably a better handle, um, and maybe a bit smarter coming off screens. Whereas Trey Young is more of a ball dominant guy, but I think he could be like a fourth option on offense. Just just have him out there playing him like you know, up to twenty minutes a game, just. On fast breaks, he can lead it, or he can just sort of run out to the corners just to space the floor. And, yeah, but 37th, I don't think he, because he's so lacking defensively, I don't think he'll be up there. Uh, Lonnie Walker is 41st as a small forward. I don't think he's fast enough as a shooting guard. As a small forward, he can just be a 3 and D guy. Shai Gilgus Alexander, I've seen him at 10th, but I think with his lack of jumper, I've got him as 63rd. Uh, I think he can, he's got a good feel for the game. 
he can handle it and makes the right pass. And at 6'6", he'd be able to defend guys, but I don't think you can fit him in to an NBA team because he's really on offense. His whole role is to be the ball-dominant guy, and that might work in college, but I don't think it'll work in the NBA because you've got so many great ball handlers already. So 63rd. So yeah, he'd go undrafted in, in my in my book. Here's something interesting. I was looking at Katie Lou Samuelson, who's out of Connecticut, University of Connecticut on the women's team. I'd have her at 101st. And considering that's over guys like Tyus Battle, uh, Shake Milton, you know, kind of big name college players, I'd have her over them because. She's 6'3", she can shoot really well, Uh, she's got a really good court feel, so it's interesting to me that as women's basketball becomes more and more, uh, more attention is given to it, then we could see some female players in the NBA, and that would be awesome to see. I mean, if she's 101st, then maybe she could get picked up by a team on the, yeah, I, I, I think... Have a look at her tape. She's just really, really solid. I think she could contribute. Yeah, so that's all the really big names. That's what I want to talk about. So I might do a you know 15th pick to the 30th pick um, big board analysis as well later on. I'll probably post this in written form. For those who don't want to listen to me talk for like, you know, 20 minutes. But yeah, there you have it. I'd like to hear from what what you think about that and, you know, try and shoot me down. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've i got some different takes. I think what I, I acknowledge that Jack, Joan Jackson, DeAndre Ayton, Michael Porter, Wendell Carter, Mikhail Bridges, Mo Bamba... Marvin Bagley should go in the lottery, but then there's a lot of guys that I think aren't being talked about enough. So, um, yeah, thanks for listening.